Hi, Ed Gillespie. I'm very glad to meet you here at the Connections in Romania. My first question for you is, how can we avoid the hot but empty air in social media branding and advertising? The hot but empty air? Yes. One of your concepts. I yeah. read an article. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think it is about focusing on what matters. You know, I think, yeah, we need to have, like, the escapist frivolity and the fun stuff that happens on social media that, you know, is part and parcel of the whole package. Um, but I think it does have to be more more anchored as well, particularly when it comes from sort of the, the business communication. And I think, you know, my, my core belief is about understanding the cultural brain print of an organization. What is the message that you're putting out into the world? And that can be playful, but I think it also has to have a degree of authenticity and gravitas and a connection to reality, you know, and I think the, the definition of authenticity I used was, you know, alignment with what is. So it has to be connected into, you know, the truth of the world. And I often use in, in other talks, I, I give a, a quote from Ayn Rand, you know, sort of famous right wing thinker um, who wrote Atlas Shrugged. And she said, uh, we can evade reality, but we can't evade the consequences of evading reality. Um, and I think that's what happens when we have that communication which isn't, which isn't grounded, you know, it's, it's not authentic because it's not in contact with the reality in which we find ourselves. And that is leading me to my second question. Uh, can, we, can we hope that we will have, uh, that authenticity will become our North Star in a social media environment? Because it is said that authenticity has a, 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 rough, uh, a rough time in, uh, and, and destiny in, in social media environment. Yeah. How can we transform authenticity to make from it a North Star? Yeah, I mean, facts don't care about your feelings. You know, I think it's the kind of the response to a lot of that. And I agree. I think, you know, people can be authentic to their own perception of reality. Um, and that's where you get some of the division because people just disagree on what reality is telling them. Um, and so that's where a lot of that conflict um, and, and tension arises from. Um, I think somehow we have to try and transcend that a little bit. And I think that has to begin with, with evidence. You know, say what is, what is the fundamental facts that we can agree on here? Um, and then you're free to interpret those, you know, or to comment on them. Um, but climate change is a great example of this. You know, when you have 99.5% of the world's climate scientists in agreement, and people saying, well, my feelings tell me that I don't agree with your facts. It's like, well, unfortunately, your feelings are wrong. Um, you know, it, it'd be great if you could use your feelings to comment on how we respond to those facts. And that's where actually the, the grist for debate and discussion and disagreement lies. But actually, there's no point in us arguing with each other about facts because we just argue till we're blue in the face. And I think, you know, as this is still a kind of relatively emergent world, you know, as I say, I think I'm quite optimistic about the medium to long term um, consequences of this. I think we're kind of we're in the playground a little bit now where we're like going, oh, we've got all these tools and, and we can connect with everyone and I can be present and vocal and I can tell a story. Uh, and as a consequence, everyone's sort of shouting over the top of each other. And I don't know if you know the Dunning and Kruger effect. Have you heard of this? So the Dunning Kruger effect is when people identify themselves as being more intelligent or informed than they actually are. And it's quite dangerous because it, it, it gives you a kind of a disproportionate sense of self-belief, yeah. um, which means you know, that you are able to dismiss people who are actually much better informed or much better argued or much better evidenced. And so, again, I think these are, these are issues which are quite deeply human issues, but social media has just brought them to the fore uh, and to the forefront in a way that we haven't experienced historically. So, um, yeah, I think we have to focus on, on, on facts and evidence. Uh, we have to focus on where actually the real territory for debate lies beyond those. Um, and we have to hope that we grow up a little bit. Thank you. Uh, what are the main three rules for a good social media branding and for a good social media advertising? <laughs> The main three rules, um, uh, people, people, people. <laughs> I th but I, I think it is, it's, you know, it's coming back to what I was discussing earlier, you know, it's like, you've got to be interesting. You've got to have something that people connect to, you know, and the things that people um, associate with, you know, shareable content 
are things which you know appeal to their sense of self-esteem you know how do I look smarter or cleverer by sharing this particular content you know uh, how does it make me a better person in terms of the self-actualization um, how do I feel like I'm helping others by giving or sharing them an information which I think is relevant or important I think those are the kind of the, the core things that's why people disseminate stuff that they found you know because it makes them feel better about themselves it says something about the way they see the world or it's helpful for the people they're trying to share it with and I think that's 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 all that's why we tell stories to each other it's like I've got a great story I heard this I learned something from it I think you might like it and I think it's important for these reasons uh, and you know I, I don't think it gets any more complicated than that um, and the final question is can we can we speak about uh, the social causes as being the, the next step uh, in uh, social communication the next step after social media influencers yeah can you can you can you speak about the transition from social media influencers to social causes yeah and I think yeah so this is what we were talking about in terms of movements um, and I think the, the biggest challenge we have actually in terms of moving into that cause based type of social media is changing the sense of identity you know and I think one of the problems we have at the moment is that the identities can feel very fractured and very tribal and very disconnected and, and that's where a lot of the division uh, and antagonism comes from but actually if you look at the the arc of human history we have been very progressively moving on to bigger scales of identity for a very long time from you know family to village to tribe to city state to nation state to trans nation state like the European Union um, and beyond and you know I think again if we look at the long term that is hopefully where we're still going what we're experiencing at the moment is a is a step back as we suddenly go well hang on I'm not comfortable with all of this you know uh, th these changes or multiculturalism or migration uh, or all of those kind of um, tensions which are arising right now but the arc of history suggests uh, you know we will continue to move towards a greater sense of identity and I'm perhaps thinking a little longer term than, than other people here but yeah I think the future looks bright if we can have that that sense of collective collaboration and cohesion because that's where peace real peace and prosperity lies